2,700 square miles of diverse and unique district that is Gavin Jones Community College District. You know, we're coming up on our centennial in 2019, and we're going to be celebrating loudly and proudly the uh, Gavin College origin as San Benito Junior College and beyond, and we want you all to be a part of that. So as a result, two years ago, we started out with an educational master plan, and I brought that plan forward and I talked with many of you about that plan. This is the plan, the educational master plan. And some of you actually gave you a copy of the educational master plan. And it was one of my first big expenditures as superintendent president, it cost $200,000 for us to do this. It's an expensive plan. And we followed that up by doing a facilities master plan, which our Board of Trustees has just approved on Tuesday night. And between the educational master plan and the facilities master plan, we now have an integrated plan for the district for the next 30 years. It was extremely important that we went through this process. Everyone on our campus, all of the communities were involved in putting together the educational master plan and now the facilities master plan for the district. This planning, this huge amount of planning is resulting in what I'm going to talk with you about today and what we're going to be talking about as we move forward towards November 2018 and the decision that our Board of Trustees is about to uh, undertake and that is whether or not to put a general obligation bond on November 2018 now. At the core of this decision is really our students and why we brought students today here, particularly our veteran students and our student leadership, is that over the last two years particularly, our student leadership has become extremely vocal. They should be. We want them to be. Throughout our district, student leaders are the people. They drive our instructional program. They drive what we're doing here in San Benito County, particularly in Hollister, because what we learn in our educational master plan and in our facilities master plan is here is where the growth is, here in this community. We know that the 1,300 students that we now know travel 25 from Hollister to Gilroy weekly for the 500 or so sections that they are a part of on our Gilroy campus. We know that if they stay here, and if we built a facility here, that it would not decimate what we're doing in Gilroy. We would have enough content here in Hollister to be able to support bricks and mortar structure here. So that's a big finding for us. We now know that can be substantiated with our master plan. So, and our students are here, and our students are supportive of that. They know that as well. We also know we have more veterans coming back to the community college system, not only in California, throughout the, throughout the country. And we know that we need to be prepared for that, not only here in Hollister, but throughout our eclectic and very unique district, Morgan Hill, Gilroy, San Juan Batista, San Martin. So, planning. Planning has been an integral part of this conversation. And taking the emotion out of Measure E, taking the conversation, the end result, the development, the progression, the things we did and did not do as a district, as a board of trustees, as a community with Measure E. Uh, Measure E, the funds are expended, and the, com the community oversight group that has been looking at Measure E will conclude their work in January 2019. The report there, the, the report to the community, is one of the final reports to the community that will be produced by our district. And the next one will be the final one. And so we are moving forward from that to be. So our plan, though, continues. The education master plan and the facilities master plan will drive the next 30 years of the district. And it's time for us now to look forward based on the core of our students. So, Sean, does this get me forward? So, I'm going to 
talk in my loud teacher voice because, as many of you know, I've taught for 30 years, so you can all hear me, right? Good. It's the New Yorker, it's the farm girl, it's the loud person in me. I can be loud. So you've heard about the college. You know the college. You know we have five locations. We are not just here at the Briggs Building. We are not just here in Gilroy. We're also at San Martin. We're also in Coyote Valley. We are also in Gilroy. We have 11 career fields, which means career technical education. We've never been able to completely do career technical education in Hollister because we've never been able to have the facilities here to be able to do that. We've never been able to completely offer those programs here in Hollister, which is something we definitely want to do. We offer 22, actually we offer 23, associate degrees for transfer, which are complete 60 unit programs that allow students to go for their junior year to a CSU without losing units in transfer. Those are fantastic programs. They're so economically sound programs that students can do at a community college, any of the 114 community colleges, and Gavilan's one of them. We have 85 associate's degrees in total at Gavilan College, and we offer uh, 73 certificates. So I, I got the stats this week because we're getting ready for commencement. We're going to award more than 1,200 degrees and certificates at this year's commencement the largest class ever. And our online classes will be growing as well. Just to remind you of who we are. We prepare students with the high tech skills they need for good jobs, for healthcare professionals. Our NCLEX uh, pass rate is still one of the highest in the states for our LBN and RN programs. Again, nursing is something we would like to take throughout our entire district boundaries. We've not been able to do that as a district. We would like to be able to do that. Partnerships with neighboring universities, government agencies, nonprofit, and STEM. We know that uh, through 2024, what was that, 2024, that STEM jobs will need at least an associate's degree or higher. And we know that here in Hollister, that uh, there are 8% of the population or less has an associate's degree. There's still rich, fertile opportunity for the entire population in San Benito County to go to school. We continue to provide that. So we offer an affordable education to lower and middle income families. Despite what you're hearing about the state right now with the governor's funding formula, which of course we still don't know what the funding formula will be for next year, that the May revision will be out tomorrow, so we will know more about what's going to happen with our May revise and with Gavilan. That's a, a giant question mark, which is not the purpose of my conversation today. But come over, and I'd be happy to talk to you more about that. We know that there are a lot of opportunities for students to begin at the community college and then launch to a four-year. We are still the most affordable place to begin any higher education journey and our students transfer. White students? Students can transfer. So with the rising cost of university education, families can continue to count on Gavilan College. And over the last two years, the public outreach that I personally have done as superintendent president has brought community members in to a very large degree. And what we're seeing now, I don't know if you've read recently about the U.S. News and World Report rankings for our GECA program, but we found out just this week, GECA is number 23 in the state of California and a num number 172 in the nation. I, I memorized that because, wow, what boasting rights for a high school program. And our faculty are a part of that. And so every one of those GECA graduates go on to either a four-year or the military or directly into the workforce. And we want to continue to build on the success of early college academy programs, which we could do anywhere within the region of our college with the right facility. So we know that the state of California does not provide us with funding for our facilities. We had some matching funds available, and just this week, with the approval of our facilities master plan, we are immediately going to put in an FPP for matching funds for our library and learning <coughs> center 
at the Gilroy campus. We are going to do that immediately. Because our library on the Gilroy campus is 50 years old, it has no air conditioning, everyone complains about it, it's old. Campus was built in 67, and the library needs to be redone. The Performing Arts Center needs to be redone. There are many campus buildings that need more than just a coat of paint and a nice air conditioner in the corner. So we're gonna work on that with the state. But in order to address the needed facility projects, the, the Board of Trustees is looking at going out for a general obligation for five, for the district in November 2018. They have to act in July so that it can be uh, addressed and go on the ballot in August. And the amount of money it would cost for all local <coughs> property owners would be $25 per $100,000 of assessed not market value or around 113 per year as long as the bond is not outstanding. Now you probably are aware of our track record when we were able to go back in, reassess our Measure E, we were able to save the voters, the district was able to save the voters. Nine million, and I'm looking around for Fred Harris, but Fred was not able to be here today. $9.7 million on our last bond, and one other time also, that was before my time, on our last bonds. So we did a good job with the reassessment of our previous bonds. And so that would be the cost of what we're looking at, which would potentially be $248 million, which would be the ceiling on the bonds that we're looking at in November. Again, the board has not made their final decision on that. What would be the things that we would look at with this bond? This is the potential list. It's been on all of our publications that have gone out on our surveys. Uh, hopefully some of you have received this mailer. Uh, that's over here on the table. If not, you're welcome to take it or go online or you're welcome to take one today, fill it out, drop it in the mail. This is our second survey about the bond. Uh, how many of you were called about the feasibility study when we did that? Did any of your households get called here in the room when we did the initial feasibility study? Okay, we called 600 families for the feasibility study in our district and it came back at 68%. So these are the things on the list that uh, have come back in the initial feasibility study for the uh, ideas, projects for a potential bond measure. So for the San Benito campus specifically, I thought you might be interested in this. Are you interested in this? Yes. Okay, <laughs> thanks, thanks audience participation. So this is uh, Gavilan College's property that you know that we own in Fairview Corners. And um, I have a couple of copies of this on hard copy. I didn't bring it for everybody. Because again, the, the board has just approved the facilities master plan. And I don't have the big hard copy as I do with the educational master plan. Our consultants are actually uh, putting it together now, and then they're going to create a bridge document by our June board meeting, and then it will go out on the web and everybody will have it. So the bridge document will be the document between the educational and the facilities master plan to talk about what are the statistics that will help to undergird both documents, the demographics, the future, and talk about what the next phase would be. So this is what would happen first. This would be the first building, maintenance and operations area that we would need at Fairview. Parking, the loop road would be the, the establishment of the first building. We would add a portable for additional classrooms as needed, which would give us labs. It would give us wet labs. We're so fortunate and appreciative to San Benito High School because we've been able to offer a section, two sections, right, Judy, of biology at San Benito High School for the first time ever in the spring semester of this year. Ever. In the 20 years we've been offering classes out here, we've finally been able to offer wetlands. So we would be able to offer labs out here and career and technical education content. We would begin to develop open space, parking within close proximity, and there could be retail site available also. 
on that property. And then the next building would be Academic Student Center, Library, Learning Resource Center, and Athletics in Phase 2. So in the Facilities Master Plan that we received on Tuesday night, our consultants and the architects did a approximate cost out. And, you know, I'm saying, I'm saying approximate because that's what it is in today's value. And of course, it's over, I'm, I'm told, in my, in my very small brain. I'm a psychologist, so I don't know how construction works. And you all, many of you in the room, do know how that works. So those are inflated numbers that for the first phase would be about 53 million in today's numbers. So yeah, I did a hard swallow when I asked. <laughs> so phase one would develop new facilities while maintaining campus life. Would that mean we would still do things at Bricks? Well, yeah, because again, our job is to provide instruction. We wanna keep providing <coughs> instruction which, by the way, beyond what we do at Briggs in our regular instruction, we have non-credit happening all throughout the community. We have 325, I think I said 320. We have 325 students who went through our San Benito County Jail program in 1617. That, that program is really, really <coughs> impressive. And through the probation uh, uh, partnership we have. And many of those students are coming to Gallup. So we would continue to offer instruction. Instruction will not stop. Again, develop a campus quad. It could be a purposeful space. There could be other ways to do other types of partnerships. That's what we want to do. That's what we have always wanted to do. Every penny raised would be spent right here in the community within our district. No funds would be taken by the state. It would also put us, it would propel us to be able to do matching funds going forward, um, which would really help us. It would help us dramatically to be able to qualify for matching funds with the state. And of course, it wouldn't go to salaries. None of this goes to salaries when you get a GO bond. And we would have to have a citizens oversight group developed right away should the bond pass in November. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna talk about today because the bond's not on the ballot, the Board of uh, Trustees has not made their decision, but I wanted you to know formally that we have planned. We have planned significantly, and the college will continue to plan because if none of this occurs, if we do not go forward with a GO bond, the college will still do instruction. We will still continue to look at instructional programs and how we can expand them in San Benito County and in Hollister, but without being able to build uh, structures to do so, we will be able to be limited in what we can do here. And so it's important for us to begin to have open conversations about our future and to give you the information and the evidence you need to be able to see where the college is growing and going in the next 30 years. <laughs>